Hi everybody, Anthony here from Monster Man Theme Productions, and today I'm going to talk about one of my most anticipated movies of 2023, Evil Dead Rise. But before we get started, I would really appreciate your support. Please leave a like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you never miss any of my new reviews. Now let's get into it. Now here's a big secret about me, and if you've been with my channel over the last year, this might be a bit of a shocker. I love horror movies. That is brand new information! Some of my favorites include Hereditary, The Exorcist, and Evil Dead 2, baby! I watched the original, dark, and incredibly gory Evil Dead back early in high school and was completely intrigued by the surprisingly effective world building and backstory of the Necronomicon while enjoying the low budget, campy madness that Sam Raimi would build his career on. And when the Deadites were unleashed and the Olympic pool sized amount of fake blood and gore that comes with them was launched at the screen, I think it awakened something in me. Mm. Mm. This better not awaken anything in me. And when I discovered that not only did this movie have a hilarious, super gory sequel that absolutely nails that mix of horror and comedy that Raimi is known for, Groovy. but that there was also a trilogy capper that dials down on the blood and gore and dials that goofiness up to 11 with a lovable asshole in the main character. All right, you primitive screwheads, listen up. This is my boomstick! <laughs> and Three Stooges style gags littered all over the place. So I was already adoring this franchise over a decade ago. And then back in 2012, I saw a trailer for a new Evil Dead movie releasing within my sophomore year of 2013 that promised to cut down on the humor and deliver some practical, visceral, nasty blood and gore. And 2013's Evil Dead really worked for me. It's one of my favorite horror movies and I thought it was one of the better horror remakes of the 2010s even though it's not technically a remake. And I still thought that even without the iconic, wisecracking badass that is Bruce Campbell's Ash. Good. Bad. I'm the guy with the gun. And from there, Ash vs. Evil Dead was a fantastic blend of those two tones. And it's total bullshit that it was cancelled. So I've been waiting very excitedly for another Evil Dead for... Holy shit, over a decade. I've been following news of this movie ever since it was first greenlit, but seeing Evil Dead Rise's trailer, the Red Band one, hooked me immediately. And let me tell you, does this movie deliver on the horrific, depraved gore fest that I've been waiting for with bated breath? With a hefty dose of dark, no, scratch that, black humor that just keeps this train chugging along throughout the entire runtime. Now where other movies in this series have taken place in a cabin in the woods, this one moves the horror to a condemned apartment building in one of the last remaining tenants, a family led by Ellie, played by Alyssa Sutherland, a single mom that owns a tattoo parlor, her musician son Dan, played by Morgan Davies, her activist daughter Bridget, played by Gabriella Coles, and her adorable youngest daughter Cassie, played by Nell Fisher. They're just chilling at home, doing their thing, packing up when Ellie's estranged sister Beth, played by Lily Sullivan, shows up for an unexpected reunion. Oh, and Dan's dumbass also finds a copy of the Notorum de Manto, also known as the Necronomicon, the Book of the Dead, since we found out in Army of Darkness that there are three copies. The 2013 group has one, Ash has one, and now this family has one. And Dan does the one thing that you should always do when you find an old creepy book with some old creepy vinyl records. He immediately starts reading it and plays the records on his turntable. What are you? An idiot sandwich. This invites the evil that's been wreaking so much havoc throughout the last 40 years right into the apartment building where it possesses Ellie. It's in me. Don't let it take my babies. Leaving Beth and the kids in for the most horrific night of their lives. I'm just gonna say it right now, this movie is fucking awesome. And it really delivers on what you expect from an Evil Dead movie. The tension, the tanker trucks full of blood and gore, the super dark humor, the body horror. It's all very Evil Dead and just left me totally absorbed and excited throughout this entire movie. And taking this formula of friends and significant others being possessed by the evil and having to fight each other, and changing it to a family trapped in one space together, fighting to survive against a source of comfort they've known for their entire lives, it really adds a ton of tension while adding to that twisted, dark humor and grisly body horror. And though it's not as squirm in your seat visceral as the 2013 film, the dedication to body horror and practical effects in this film is just fantastic. Awesome! Wicked cool! Especially with that f***ing cheese grater that put me on edge when I just saw it in the trailer. When she grabbed that thing in the movie, I was like, oh, f***, here it comes. My yeah, it's not really anything we haven't seen before, but with Alyssa Sutherland's fantastic performance as possessed Deadeye Ellie, I mean, the way she moves and contorts alone is creepy as hell, and the absolutely horrific things she does to not just her family, but the rest of the tenants on her floor, makes this movie just haunting. And the occasional dark humor woven in with her dialogue and certain things she does really harkens back to Evil Dead 2 in the best of ways. The sheer insanity of this horror movie makes it worth the ticket price alone. Yeah, it's not as visceral as the 2013 one, like I said, but man, is it still mean and 
definitely not for the squeamish. While being incredibly satisfying for horror fans like myself. What is wrong with me? Especially considering Evil Dead 2 is like one of my favorite movies of all time. All of this mean-spirited humor, delightfully nasty practical blood and gore effects, and just barely further than surface level depth of the characters and their relationships really pushes this hour and 40 minute movie along at a brisk pace. And before you know it, you're right smack dab in the middle of the insane third act that maybe goes a little too insane, but still keeps with that fun, bloody chaos that is all throughout the second act. I mentioned Alyssa Sutherland's Ellie and her terrifying yet fun performance earlier, but the rest of the cast is all great too, especially Lily Sullivan's Beth, who ends up becoming our hero and looks pretty at home wielding a chainsaw and a shotgun. Hey back, I got a chainsaw! Morgan Davies as Dan and Gabrielle Eccles as Bridget are also believable teens and have good chemistry while playing up the fear, pain, and occasional evil when they have to. And Nell Fisher's Cassie is so adorable and sweet while playing it very naturally when she's scared. You'd be a good mom someday, honey, Oh, yeah? Yeah, you know how to lie to kids. <laughs> to the point where I really hope that the studio is paying for therapy sessions for her. The characters and the actors are all great. The one thing that I thought was missing a little bit from their characterizations were reactions, I guess. Like the violence, something the 2013 film does better than this one is having the characters react appropriately and being completely shocked, horrified, or panicked seeing the people that they love going through this shit. But in this film, while the evil is attacking the family and menacing them and making fun of them and mutilating them in horrific ways, no one ever really reacts besides just screaming and running, which felt kind of weird. Like if I was in this situation, I would definitely have to be told to run once or twice. Don't look back! Because, you know, I'd be completely devastated and shocked and horrified watching my possessed mother terrorize and mutilate my siblings. And for another small complaint with the characters, the rest of the supporting cast making up the tenants on Ellie's floor are fine, but have basically no characterization and are pretty much just there to be meat puppets for the slaughter. So long, meat bags. But besides that, the performances are all great, the story is evil dead through and through, down to the dark ass humor thrown in at the most unexpected points. The body horror is grisly and well executed with realistic and visceral practical effects and the pacing is quick and efficient. While the cinematography is very fantastic, it felt Raimi inspired. One scene in particular with possessed Ellie tearing through her apartment hallway to shot through their apartment's people and it really, really gives an exciting creative flair to that scene much more so than if it was just like cut super close up and cut to all hell like so many other movies do it. The only part of this movie that I felt was a little unnecessary, besides the fact that it's creepy and gives us one of the coolest title sequences I've seen in a while, were the beginning and ending bookends that show characters completely separate from our main characters being attacked by the evil at a cabin. Those scenes were definitely scary and gory, but they don't really have any bearing on the rest of the movie and felt kind of unnecessary, just like they were there to only be sequel bait. But besides that and my other small complaints, this is a tight, mean, and darkly comical gore fest with everything you've come to know and love from this franchise and should really satisfy anyone looking for a fun, blood-soaked time at the movies. And that's my review of Evil Dead Rise. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I've been Anthony from Awesome Anthony Productions. If you like this video, please go ahead and leave a like to help with the algorithm. Leave a comment, let me know your thoughts. And while you're at it, you can subscribe and ring the bell so you never miss any of my new content. You can also click or tap on these cards here. We'll take you to my review of the Super Mario Brothers movie or just over to my channel where you can check out my reviews, my shorts, and my old shit. Thanks so much for watching, everybody, and we'll see you on the next one.